Good afternoon. <laughs> we'll call our meeting to order. Bernie's going to give us a report on cigars later. Do we want to do roll call to see if we have a quorum? Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Mayor Judd. <laughs> Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mr. Whalen. Here. Mr. Strand. Here. Mr. Campbell. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Ms. Carlson. Here. A quorum is present. Thank you. To have a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Steen moves. Is there a second? Peterson second. Any discussion or corrections? On this one, we'll just say all those in favor say aye. 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 Do I have a motion to move the order of the agenda? Strand approved, moves. Second? Who didn't second it? Any corrections or additions, Joel, to it? This is it? Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Good. We have a consent agenda, financial report, and a voucher approval. Do I have a motion to approve? Steen moves. Is there a second? Second. Olson, second. Here. Very good. Here. Any questions of any of the financial report? Any questions on the consent? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Gardas. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Whalen? Yes. Mr. Strand? Yes. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Olson? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. That is everyone. Good. Joel, you're up for Executive Director Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a few items to talk about. Uh, we had a pretty active month this last month. Uh, we uh, have a new director of communications position posted right now, uh, and that runs, advertises through the end of the month. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great candidates for that, so we look forward to going through the interview process with the intent of having uh, director of communications on board October 1st. Um, also been uh, a, a couple of just uh, changes at Jacobs as well. Um, Kim is moving into a kind of a part-time role. Uh, she was the, the, the previous program manager, and we're having Paul Barthel moving into the program manager position. Um, I, I worked with Jacobs. I urged them to look locally for an assistant program manager, deputy program manager. Uh, happy to say that they were able to find somebody local. Um, so Ms. Piggy Harder has joined the team as the uh, Deputy Program Manager for Jacobs, and Peggy is here if she wants to wave. Um, so th that'll be a, a new face. <laughs> so we're happy to have her on board. Um, we also uh, had the results of the Fargo um, audit uh, for the Diversion Authority, um, and Ide Bailey will be doing a, a brief report for the board this afternoon, so I won't dig into that too much. Um, I would like to bring up um, maybe a, a change in the way we distribute board packets. Uh, we had some issues last month just due to the size uh, of the board packets not getting to board members, um, uh, getting bounced back by uh, email servers. So we're considering proposing to the board to provide a link that uh, board members can click on to to access, uh, access the board packets. So we'll make that change for the next month's meeting if there's no objections from the board. Oh, Chad Peterson. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, Metro Cog's been doing that for a long time. I served in that when I was first elected and that is the most handy. Darn thinks the public can access it easily too, so it's, it's a great solution. Yeah, and we'll still continue to post uh, um, to our website as well so the public can still access the board agendas and, and the packets that way. But uh, I think it'd be easier to, to, to have the board members access it this way. So, well, great. 
Uh, we also have had some activity on the contested case hearing. Uh, we'll talk about that more in executive session with a, with a more comprehensive update. Uh, we did have a call with the ALJ yesterday that uh, basically set the schedule now moving forward. So we have a little bit more certainty than we did um, uh, over the last few weeks on when there'll be some resolution to that contested case hearing. Uh, and we continue to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the developers, and those are going very well. Um, a lot of great uh, innovation coming out of those meetings, uh, going back and forth with our engineering team and theirs to kind of vet out some of those uh, uh, concepts and ideas. Um, so very exciting month as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. I'll take any questions if anybody has any for any, me. Any questions, Joel? If not, Terry, are you online? Core project update? I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Paul is going to display our monthly update for the core for August. He's got Thank it you. up. Yep. Great. So um, items one and two for the two structures we've got going on, I'll cover those in a little bit. Uh, number three, the, the design of the big Red River structure, we remain on schedule. Uh, using the physical model, we're done using that to test, and we've got a final report coming in in about October. Again, we uh, remain on schedule for that big design. Uh, Reach SD1 number four, um, we've got another bit of a delay in design, but we've got contract awards still planned for third quarter next year. Uh, number five, no change from last month. Number six, the I-29 raise. Um, the final review is scheduled to start here in a couple of weeks. Uh, still the award of that in second quarter of 21. Number seven, drain 27 wetland mitigation. We had an environmental assessment out for review. We're take, we took comments and we're evaluating those now um, to include in our final EA. Number eight, geomorphology surveys. We've got multiple survey crews in the field right now to prepare for our contractor to go out and do the actual assessments for geomorphology. Uh, yeah, the next page, Paul, the bottom, pretty great picture of um, the, the event we had out at the inlet on Tuesday. Um, it was a, another great day out another there. Another great day out there. Um, next page. Um, uh, next this page. Sorry, I'm getting some feedback. But this is uh, something we handed out at the event on Tuesday to the press and everybody, and it's just a one page describing the diversion inlet structure construction, some kind of basics how we're doing with respect to schedule. We're ahead of schedule out there by about 4%. Um, the scope of the project, what happened the last 30 days, what's going to happen in the next uh, 30 days, which is going to be probably a lot more concrete pouring, and we're going to see the first vertical wall being poured. If you're out there anytime soon, you'll see that it's formed up, and you can get an idea of how tall the structure is going to be. Um, next page, we have a similar one for the wild rice. A bunch of us were able to go out there as well to see that they are uh, driving the first pile, getting the foundation work going out there, um, driving pipe pile for one of the approach walls. Kind of the same stats for that structure. With that, that ends my report. Are there any questions? No questions. No. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Senator Holman really liked getting his fingers in the concrete yesterday, so glad we could do that. Uh, General Counsel update, John Shockley, Lufia update. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Diversion Authority Board. It's just a brief update today. We continue making progress on closing the WIFI alone. Uh, our tentative closing date is going to be sometime in late October. As part of that, we are required to get a second rating. Um, we, uh, some of you may recall back in early earlier this year, we uh, obtained an indicative rating uh, from Moody's. Uh, as part of the WIFI loan closing process, we we're required to get a second rating from a second rate national ratings agency. Uh, our team has negotiated down the rating, the cost for the rating, 
Uh, given the size of the loan, 561 million, the rating is generally based upon the size of the loan. It's about $125,000. Um, the board had previously given authority to move forward with that, but given the large size of the fee, I wanted just to provide an update to the board mm -hmm. so that if you had any questions before we start saying, yeah, yeah, we'll pay the fee, that you're you're okay with it. We, we are required to get a second rating. So of the two other national companies, they were the lowest. So, And I, I can certainly provide any updates you might have or have any Any, any questions? questions? Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Public outreach. Roger Olson, you're on, I think, and Rocky. Yep, Roger's here. Just a um, couple uh, updates. Um, we're still waiting for the Clomer from FEMA. Um, we're waiting for the final approval. Expecting that in a couple weeks. So after that, that'd be a mailing out to the landowners from the Diversion Authority and then from both North Dakota and Minnesota entities that are that are requiring the land, and those letters will letter will also include a map showing uh, what each individual property owner can expect, and uh, then uh, township meetings. I think Joel, I don't know if you mentioned that um, you're going out to the township meetings and. And I think that's just an excellent way to uh, keep in touch and and uh, find out, you know, what the problems are and what they, what their questions are. And then I'm going to turn it over to Rocky. He's got a few updates, and also I think he's got a, a video, a short video. Rocky. Thank you, Roger, Mr. Chair, and um, board members. I'm Rocky Schneider. Uh, as Roger mentioned, we we had a number of outreach. Um, items yesterday. One of the big ones was the outreach committee was provided with a draft of the new communications plan. The idea is to get some feedback on the draft. The draft comes after you know a survey of about 10,000 residents across this the area and upstream. And also we did about 10 focus groups. I think we had about three dozen people attend the focus groups. And so we got a lot of hard data and some anecdotal data. Try to put those together and some new ideas. Working with Joel, we have fast-tracked a couple items that you'll see over the next month. We are going to be developing a Facebook page, an official page for the, the project to really focus on the implementation and construction with all the updates that you see from the core and others. And then we also um, did a first podcast. Uh, we can use both the video and audio of that. Uh, Darren Selvig interviewed Joel, I think, last week. And you'll look to see some more topical, you know, really get into the detail on some of the, the cool, innovative topics of the project. Um, you also see in front of you um, those in, in person and those online will have to get in touch with you at some point. But there was the first concrete pour in late July and then you saw the big concrete pour that Terry talked about when Senator Hoven was out there. From that first concrete pour, they were nice enough to make what these we're calling pucks, these concrete pucks that have a label on them and an appreciation of all your efforts to get us to this point. One of our goals with the new communications plan is to really celebrate progress as the construction continues. And so it's a good way to mark a, a pretty uh, concrete development, I guess. And so I'd like to show you, a, a, it's a little less than three minutes. It's a flyover of when Senator Hoven was visiting with the Colonel and you can see the, the progress update here.
is a, a two minute video on the website and YouTube as well of the wild rice structure. It's, it's, it's similar. It's obviously a couple stages behind this, but it's, it's interesting. Um, we did show the outreach committee that, but I just want to say it's an exciting time to be involved in the communications on this and it's fun to show the progress. Uh, we are having conversations, Joel and Chris and I, about how to set up some tours that maybe Chris could be in charge of giving out there. I know they have strict COVID regulations on the job site out there, so they, they're trying to limit the number, but it'd be fun to do an event with everybody, but I think we're working on how there can be a regular offer to go out and sort of get boots on the ground and see it for everybody that's interested. Otherwise, okay. any questions, happy to answer them. Any questions? Very good. Thank you, Rocky. Thank, Thank you, you, Roger. Land management, Mary Shirley and Eric to speak. Hello. Um, thank you. Land management met yesterday, and um, we have no new appraisals since the June meeting. Um, and that was the last time we met, but we um, they've certainly been busy. There's been 13 acquisitions since June. Uh, 12 formal offers have been set, sent out, and there's a number of negotiations that are actively going on right now. The Cass County Commission has held two public meetings with property owners, and um, as a result of that, have authorized the Cass County Joint Board um, to utilize last resort eminent domain. We anticipate there will be several more of these hearings that will be occurring in the near future. Um, uh, yesterday during our land meeting, we did uh, take another look at that process and make sure that we felt comfortable that we were, um, we, were we were adhering to everything that we were supposed to be doing and, and uh, we feel like our process is, is a good one. So um, in addition to that, we have access agreements uh, secured for 366 of the 375 um, Biogeo monitoring that needs to be accomplished. Um, we received the final phase 1B report from Crown Appraisals uh, for the flowage easement valuations. Very impressive pro um, process that they've gone through to um, achieve what they've done to date. We also have received the final phase 1 report from Watson Associates on the crop insurance development that we're working on. We continue to work on the details for the Rural Mitigation Program and uh, the forgivable loan part of that. And then yesterday we also approved a recommendation for a remnant land sale for a displaced uh, business. And I don't know if, Eric, you had anything else you wanted to add to that? Mary has done a fantastic job. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. <laughs> <laughs> questions of the commission? Eric, you want to make any comments otherwise? Do you think you worked out something that's worked in the past? John Chockley worked with you on the loan forgiveness program? Yeah, on the loan program, I guess just a few comments on that, and we'll, we'll continue working with the land committee on the details. But um, if you recall, the board did approve this forgivable loan program a month or two ago. Uh, we have a number of property owners who are expressing interest in that and wanting to know the details. And so we've been working with John and his team over at Onstead to develop kind of a term sheet, uh, develop a, a, a mortgage and a promissory note uh, so the borrower can view those documents. Um, there, anytime we hold a mortgage, uh, and in this case, it's likely gonna be a secondary mortgage, um, of course, there's some risk if the borrower defaults on that mortgage. Uh, but working through those details and talking with John and his team, we feel like if that scenario would happen, um, just like any other default mortgage, we would have a series of remedies at our disposal, and it depends on the unique circumstances, of course. But um, all things considered, we feel pretty comfortable with those remedies, and so feel like uh, you know we're, we're able to advance that program. And our land agents are telling us that the reaction from business owners out in the in the area and farmstead owners is really positive, and so I think it's a good program that'll work real well for us. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate the report. You. Mayor Dardas, Finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Finance Committee met yesterday and had a number of uh, items that we discussed. Uh, one of them was the board approval contract, which requires action by the board today. Uh, that was for an amendment for Aon Professional Services, for, which is insurance. And uh, if you would need more detail, I'd have to uh, rely on Mr. Paulson for that. 
Uh, so this is an actionable item, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I, I would so move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any questions on this? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Wayland. Mr. Wayland. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. And that is everyone. Thank you. Mayor, you have had some other parts here, I see. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the other things that the Finance Committee uh, reviewed yesterday was the audit uh, performed by uh, Ide, Helmet, uh, Ide Bailey and uh, Jamie Fay of that organization is with us today uh, to give us a summary. And before we move into that, I would like to thank Mr. Coston and his staff at the City of Fargo for all their work and how they pro or worked closely with Ide Bailey on the uh, on the audit. So, Mrs. Fay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I have a presentation that hopefully will be, be popped up there. Um, my name is Jamie Fay. I'm a partner here at Ide Bailey, uh, and I work to get um, with the city staff to get the diversion authorities audit for December 31st done. And this had to be a three-year audit uh, to go along with the WIFI loan application. So we're looking at December 31st of 2017, 2018, and 2019. Uh, so if we talk about what an audit is, and if you scroll forward just a couple pages, we, when you come in to do an audit, we come in with the purpose of giving an audit opinion. So on the next slide, uh, it talks about the audit opinion. So when we come in, we, we get the financial information from uh, the entity, in this case, the Diversion Authority. We worked very closely with Kent and his team, um, and they did a great job of really making this a priority to make sure we got the WIFIA, uh, got in time for the WIFIA loan application. Uh, you received a clean, unmodified opinion, which is what you want. What that means is that there are no material misstatements and the financial statements are fairly presented. Uh, so throughout the audit process, we did a number of procedures and that accomplishes giving you this opinion. That opinion goes along with your application uh, when it got submitted. So this is based on our professional opinion. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more if you flip to the next page about the procedures. So when we come in to do an audit, we do a few different things as far as procedures. Uh, the first one really being, uh, if you flip to the next page, the first one really being risk assessment. So we come in and we say, okay, what does this entity do? What are their kind of high risk areas? And from there, that's how we develop which procedures we're going to do. Uh, from there, we do some transaction testing, meaning we'll get invoices, we'll look at the controls around those invoices. So if there's sign offs and making sure that uh, when expenditures happen, that they're going through the proper channels. Um, from a level of effort standpoint, uh, echoing what was already said about the finance staff, we looked at 900 invoices uh, over the three years. And so that is a pretty significant lift. And so that went really well. We, again, didn't find anything that we had findings on that we needed to report. Um, so that was a big lift as far as transactions being tested, but it all went well. Uh, the next thing we do is some analytical calculations. So we'll say, okay, what do we expect these balances to be either based on historical information of this entity or similar entities? And really looking at, did you come up within those expectations? If not, what happened? Um, and doing those types of calculations. And then the last two pieces are looking at control, internal controls and walkthroughs. So that really is looking at what kind of controls do you have around the different procedures? Who brings in the cash if you get cash? Who signs for the disbursements? You know, you have the board that approves some disbursements or do you have an individual that looks at that? Um, and then really stepping some of those items through the whole process to make sure that what we're seeing is happening is actually happening. Um, and this is really something to keep in mind as the diversion authority, if they start to grow, you know, maybe you take on more staff, more responsibility moves out of the city and into the diversion authority. Um, really the control structure that's in place that we, we tested was really the, the city's controls because it kind of went through that same flow. 
Um, so just keeping that in mind, um, as you start to grow again, those controls really were in place. And we didn't find, again, any issues there that um, would have raised any red flags there. So the next part that we're going to talk about is the financial statements. And the next graph is really just talking about cash, basically. So it's called equity and pooled investments, uh, really because that cash is held within uh, a pooled cash with the city. And so this is the diversion authorities portion of that. And you can see it ebbs and flows a little bit. Cash is just at the end of the year, could vary depending on what are your accounts receivable, what are your accounts payable. Uh, but at the end of each year, you can see it went 63.3 million, 84.7 million, and 83.7 million there. Uh, the next page, this one really is the activities. So we have revenues, expenses, investment income, and then net position. Uh, so there's a lot on there, but the one thing I want to kind of draw your attention to is investment income. At the bottom, that one really did go up. 2019 was a great year for a lot of investment um, pieces, and so you got some additional investment income there. And then the net position, that's that top line. That's kind of what's left at the end of the year. So you can see the revenues, expenses kind of move together for these years. And as you have more years that are under the audit, you'll have more historical information to look at that will be comparable. But this is really the three years that were under audit. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to really point out when it comes to the financial statements, if you take a look at those, um, it really has to do with the structure of those. And I know that there's a lot of construction going on with the diversion authority. And so if you look at that, you'll see no property plant and equipment on the diversion authority's financial statements. And there's actually no debt because the WIFI alone hasn't been approved yet. Uh, really, that came down to, you know, we did a lot of research and consulting with the city and um, their staff there, as well as the diversion authority. The, the property really doesn't stay with the diversion authority. It kind of moves out. So that's why you won't see property, plant, and equipment on those financial statements. So I wanted to just bring that up in case anyone had questions um, on that. And other than that, that is all I had. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any commission? Any questions by the commission? No, that was very thorough. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Joel, you comment on this, or uh, next item, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fay. The next item is the North Dakota uh, State Water Commission cost share application. Uh, that attachment is at 5.0, and Mr. Paulson will share with us. Uh, thank you, Mayor Dardis. Um, so I just wanted to make the board aware of some conversations that we've been having with the State Water Commission and the Office of the State Engineer in North Dakota. Um, this comes uh, from a request letter that we received from the Office of the State Engineer in July. Um, they indicated that the revenues in the Resources Trust Fund were projected to be much lower um, than what revenues were prior to COVID-19 and the drop in oil prices. And as this board knows, uh, the state dollars that come into the diversion program come from the Resources Trust Fund. Uh, so there's some concern that the revenue wasn't coming in to meet their obligations um, for, for dollars that were appropriated in the 2019 session. And they asked us if we weren't going to use it, if we could defer it until the next, uh, into a later uh, legislative session. So we looked uh, at what our activities were going to be over the course of the next two years. And we identified approximately $254 million in expenditures. Um, and when we compared that to our 50% cost share with the state and the projected revenues coming in through sales tax, we were able to identify about $22.5 million that we could defer into a later session and not draw upon that uh, from the state at this time. Uh, and as this board also knows, uh, as we move towards closing on the WIFI loan, it's gonna provide us an immense amount of flexibility as far as how we work with the state and how we deal with our expenditures. Um, and so I think that's a fortunate thing for us is that we can be this flexible. Um, ultimately, I think if we didn't defer the dollars, they wouldn't be there anyways. Um, and so we need to find a way to, to work together with the state to, to meet um, their obligations the best that they can and continue to keep our program on track. So uh, we have responded to the state in the form of a cost share agreement for our 2019 funds, requesting 44 million uh, in, in joining in the remaining 2017 funds that we have under that uh, a new cost share agreement 
that's also going to give us some flexibility to be able to um, request uh, past reimbursements. Um, and so we'll be able to free up some of the cash that we have at the state and put that into our coffers. So any questions related to that? Any questions? Very good, Joe. Thank you. Mayor Dardis. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the finance report. Thank Mr. Chairman. Much. Mr. Chair, Mr. Dardis, probably should take formal action on approval of the audit. The finance committee did not do that. They forwarded it to the board to do that. Are you making the motion? They will move to approve the audit report. Is there a second? Peterson, second. Any discussion? Good work by the finance department, the county, and the city. They did great work on that, Kent. Really appreciate it. Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Whalen. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. And that is everyone. Commissioner Pipcorn, are you ready for the next motion? I am, but I think the last time uh, Commissioner Peterson corrected that I could just make the motion and not have to read the whole dang thing. So I think he was, <laughs> I think he's a lot smarter than I am, which is not a surprise. So I'll make a motion that we go into, I'll make the proposed motion. Is there a second? Peterson, Peterson second. In second, and we're going to be going into executive session. Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Whalen. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. That is everyone. Very good. We're going to go up to the River Room and Executive Session. Just want to forewarn the committee members. We did have somebody in the office with COVID, so would like you all to wear a mask when we go into that area, please. Thank you. We'll reconvene the Diversion Authority Board. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We do have a quorum in the room right now, too. Thank you. Thank you.